Carrie Harrison with you, and welcome to our Carrie Harrison Files. This is the unexpurgated, untainted, uncircumcised version of what we would do normally on broadcast radio and public radio, but we don't no longer have the impediment, the blanket, the bludgeon of the FCC, so we can talk openly and frankly about the things that matter and affect you and affect me. And of course, your comments will come up on the screen, and we're looking forward to having a, a deep dive. Let me bring up the great Rory Penland right now. Rory, oh. of course, man of a thousand voices, now actually a thousand and four voices. We're from Midway Avenue. Welcome. Welcome, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also the great, and when I say great, I, I mean large, Renee, 800 pounds. At but least. He's, She's got a video filter on right now, which is slimming her. That is a great That's piece of great. technology. It's great. It's, it's really, I don't know if you've seen The Whale, Brandon Frazier's great work of art, but really that's what's happening. But this AI is making me look a certain way. And I'm very, I'm very proud of that. My yeah. AI is becoming my own identity. Doing real time. Do you know, I remember Brendan Frazier as Tarzan. And I have to say that was soft porn in the movie theater. I don't know if you saw Do you remember that movie? George? Yeah, I do. I'll never forget was it. it George ever. of the Jungle? No, I think it was, yeah, it was George of the Jungle. I yes. mean, God damn. That was just wrong. Just It was just naked, <laughs> back and forth. No, it was right, the... Carrie. It was right. It felt right. <laughs> it felt In right. all the right places. And John Cleese is the ape. <laughs> and then he opted for like a different look, which was very disappointing. He was also in a great movie called Gods and Monsters, where mm -hmm. he played a pool boy and uh, ended up having a romance with an older gay guy. And, you know, everyone thought, well, here he is. Now we know who he is. It turns out it's not who he is. He's what's called an actor. Like, I'm just playing someone. I'm not playing with them. He's not an actual pool boy. You can't actually hire him to come. That's correct. That's yeah. what it's about. You can hire him to <laughs> clean your pool. That's what's so disappointing. And it's unfortunate, really. Yes, that would cost millions. Well, and he doesn't fight mummies either. No. Uh, mm, well. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Actually, he's never mind. commented about that. <laughs> it could It could be the case. It's but possible. let's what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to delve into uh, it's sort of like a, a part two of an interview that I did a few weeks ago with a congressional candidate from San Francisco area. San Francisco is I, I think it likes to think that it's the progressive capital of Earth. I think L.A. likes to think it's the progressive capital of Earth. I know that the L.A. people do not feel highly about the San Franciscan people, and the San Francisco people look at L.A. as shit. It's a lot That's of on a good day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because L.A. has, like, no books. The last bookstore was closed years ago. And why would anyone in L.A. ever bother reading a book? When you could have a coffee table book, you have one of those, one of those, mostly photos. Um, and L.A. people are like the pictures. Yeah, they like the pictures. You're like you're stroking a cat there. You seem like a very <laughs> Bond villain. Like, yes, yes. Uh, my, I'm channeling my inner um, Ernst Stavro Blofeld. And look, <laughs> another time we'll, we'll, we'll talk Bond. about Ian Fleming and really break down his characters because I got to know a lot about those. It was fascinating. And my and my favorite part to share is Bianca's backstage right now laughing her tushy off. She loves this conversation. It is resonating with her as a San Francisco. Well, and, and, you know, we couldn't really do this on the public radio because I would have just gotten pulled into the office and bludgeoned and, and cattle prodded. I would have had my genitals brought out, Harrison. each testicle singly put in a small nutcracker and the vice turned. Oh, don't do it. No, yeah. don't do and it, Harrison. Eyeballs <laughs> exothomically popping out and swinging, swinging I'm on the sorry. optic nerves. We until don't I want said, that for you. No, I don't want that. No. That's why we're here. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Rory. <laughs> for Bianca, she says, for that's just a Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to bring her on. She's running for Congress. This is just the short nutshell. Um, uh, we're talking about uh, universal health care for all. What is universal health care, you wonder? What is that? What is that? That's socialist. That sounds socialist to me. Yes. Just like having a fucking fire department. 
everyone yes. gets the fire or department. Why? Department. Or because a- when when yeah. Rory's house catches fire, and there's Renee, and his sparks come flying off his roof onto her roof and burn her house down, she also gets to have a fire department. <laughs> yes. That's what that means. Uh-huh. It's okay. Um, and uh, and if we did a plebiscite right now in the United States, in the current United States right now, plebiscite, a national vote, thumbs up, th- thumbs down, maybe using an app so that people could do it. And the question was, if all white people, white people only, could have free, unlimited, all-you-could-eat medical care taken mm-hmm. out of their taxes with no extra cost, you go to the doctor every day, brain transplants, lung, bionic legs, limbs, whatever you need. Free, unlimited, all you can in health care, like in Europe, where you get a bill of zero cents, no matter what they do and how often you go, would you vote if only white people, coast to coast, had this free, unlimited health care out of their taxes, no extra cost? They would vote overwhelmingly yes. But the reason we don't have it, it's racist. <laughs> it is. It's racist. This country yeah. would never in a million years. People, I, listen, here in the South, where I'm sitting right here today, if people find out their doctor was just dealing with a a, a Latino or a, a African-American before touching Mildred as she comes in in her cane and her, her sensible shoes, her stockings half rolled down down her thigh and her wig hanging over one eye, box of Domino's pizza crunched under one arm and a can of Schlitz crunched up with her long red fingernails where the polish is chipped off and you can see what's underneath. And she's standing there shaking in front of that doctor. And he looks at her and goes, I don't want to touch you, honey. She goes, but look what you just touched. He goes, you're worse. But see, doctors can't say that because they have to play golf and it's tea time. Speaking of which... Let's bring on Bianca von Grieg, and we'll let her tell in her own words. She's running for Congress to replace Nancy Pelosi's seat. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, she's got lots to say about Nancy Pelosi, which you just say the name and everyone reacts. Most people don't, like Nancy Pelosi, yawn. No, they just, it's like Hillary Clinton, and suddenly the whole room lights up. They all have an opinion. Uh, But... Um, this one wants to do what would be called uh, progressive things uh, like uh, uh, a Green New Deal, uh, Medicare for all, uh, codifying Roe v. Wade. That would mean, Renee, that uh, Jim, my neighbor, who you can't see, who I just circumcised his cat 10 minutes ago. So they're <laughs> in the back dealing with that right now. But that means that Jim could not chase you around the block with a speculum. Exactly. Because, yes, because you were pregnant. And he was going to handle that. Um, Although if he worked for the government, he could do that because the government owns your baby factory. Mm. You do not have agency anymore. No, I'm I'm just a product. You're a product. Yes, you're a product. My product is a product. Yes, your product is a product. And Walgreens and CVS now do have the uh, pill form of an abortion pill, but it's not legal in the state of Florida, which also doesn't allow people to drive in the left lane under 55 miles an hour, nor does it allow any medicine, any medicine at all for transgender people in the state of Florida. It is illegal, forbidden a fourth degree felony, third degree felony, actually, for anybody who is gay to go to a doctor and try to get medical care, even if it's a heart attack, you can now be legally turned away. It has nothing to do with Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, federal laws. This is states pulling at states' rights things until it gets sued and finds out, oops, it was illegal afterwards. But by then, five years have passed and it's normal. And the rednecks are goddamn happy that it finally happened. Shit. We've been waiting 48 years for this to happen, and finally they do. Problem is, I went in there to get medicine, and they looked at me, and they they didn't know what the hell they were looking at. They said, Jesus Christ, and they denied me medicine. Can you believe it? Well, this is how it always goes, isn't it? Again, fantastic accent work. (laughs) Carrie Harrison, the man of a thousand and one voices. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Well, let's be good good fellows. And fellettes, and let's bring in Bianca von Krieg, who is running for Congress from San Francisco, who has a wonderful sense of humor. I, I recall in the beginning of our other one, um, she pointed out that she was comfortable, I think, under like a waterfall of Louis Vuitton luggage. And I thought, okay, I like this. Yes, yes. I can vote that way. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> always shoes. I have I I enjoy being financially exploited by high-end shoe stores sometimes. That's my fun uh, life. So but, Bianca yeah, I'm back, uh, Carrie. You we're gonna ask you to use your bar voice because your mic wherever your microphone is hidden somewhere, oh, yell yeah. at it. Yeah, just really just beat the shit out of it. Just pound those vocal cords. Really get that diaphragm up and just plosives right into it and it will be happy. How's that? Is this better? Yes, I yes. It's so beautiful. Okay. So, so let's talk a little bit. I know we you wanted to make some corrections on um, some things that I'd observed. The conservative media likes to put you on way more than they like to put me on. They like to put me on a gallows. They like to put me on a rack. They like to put me on, but never do I get ever an invitation. Uh, no, no, never. Uh, so that part was where, where you and I were like, I didn't have the clarity of why they seem, because as far as I know, those bastards do not think that transgender is cool. They're not like lining their kids up to go play baseball with somebody that was born a biological ex, but is now a that. That seems to drive them crazy. Somehow you've broken into their world. That's a coup. Well, you know, they like me, you know, for the, you know, first and foremost, uh, because I'm running against Nancy Pelosi. And the one thing that they, that they, prefer more than hating Nancy Pelosi is liking me and having somebody who can take her place. You know, we've worked together with him up here on a number of issues. We actually worked on the recall of Newsom. We got 500,000 Democrats to sign the recall of Gavin Newsom. That's one third of the total needed with the intention that we could get in a progressive candidate. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but the electoral research shows that it could have. Now, the other thing that they're excited about up here is universal basic income, which shifts the responsibility of caring for the employee from the singular employer to the plurality of society, which benefits everyone. And we pay for that not by raising middle-class taxes. We actually want to give them significant economic relief, but we pay for that with a wealth tax. 77 of California's 156 billionaires live in this city there's no wealth tax and we have like the highest homeless rates around the country we can solve these problems but they don't want to do it the republicans know that no republican gets elected anything even dog catcher in san francisco which isn't even a thing <clears throat> and well, speaking, uh, the election of dog catcher so let's just take donald trump because he is back in the news again for having been so exciting we have now learned from the scotus or scrotus as i like to call them that's the Supreme Court of the United States, for those of you who aren't familiar with SCOTUS is, but I throw an R in there because it's easier to pronounce. Renee, you have legal training. You would agree. I believe it, yeah. Yes, exactly. And Rory, you as a man of a thousand words and a thousand voices. No, he's terrible. He's always nasty to me. He never tells the truth. He's just terrible. It's the typical media, you know, <laughs> making scrotum jokes about me. So Scrotus has decided that Donald Trump, that each president is allowed one insurrection. <laughs> yes. Now, if Donald Trump, ha he's a lot. Now, is that per presidency, per term, per lifetime? But you're allowed one insurrection. How many does it take? where we have a bad outcome is with the successful insurrection wouldn't be called one because it would just be called the new normal. So this bothers me. And at least uh, Bianca von Krieg, if you're in there, uh, I imagine you'll probably like smack a few of those people in Congress around and say, can you believe this? Oh, we got a big no smack shame, list. Senator. Huge, huge smack list. Smack Matt Gates for me, please. <laughs> when you get the chance. He's on that. As, as with, oh, uh, as with many of our party. We have a lot of people that we're going we're gonna to try and nail. And that's, what, that's the whole point of going out there. It's not just about talking about these things. We want to get them to a vote and find out who the people are, who are the, you know, who the real dinos are, and call them out on it. Because, again, Nancy Pelosi had three supermajorities to do things like codify Roe v. Wade, 
and pass, you know, uh, the Affordable Care Act, locally known as the Obamacare Act, uh, uh, Obamacare. And she's had nearly four decades in Congress. She hasn't done anything but line her pockets. We've seen recently with NVIDIA, where she made a million dollars on insider stock trading. And we should also point out that NVIDIA's re uh, earnings rose on news that they created a special uh, AI chip designed to surveil the Chinese people. So she profited on the misery and suffering of the Chinese people. But is that considered unethical for Congress nowadays? I mean, I remember when they were supposed to declare this and be nice boys and girls and not go on people's yachts without disclosing it. Then they got, well, if they just disclose it, it's OK. And then with Citizens United, you can hand gold bullion to a senator, but not directly. I would have to hand gold bullion, like let's say 40 <laughs> pounds of gold bullion. I'd have to hand it to Renee. Renee then, Senator Rory at the top there. Renee would have to hand it to Senator Rory. I cannot hand it directly right. to Senator Rory. There has I have to be to, a middleman. Rory yeah, Kennedy, there has to be a middleman. And that makes it all okay. And then you can stitch it up in the jacket. Yeah. Then just yeah. wash your hands of the whole well, thing. Well, we're going we're gonna to change what the new normal is. We're going to change what it is to be okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, polls show that uh, the stock trading ban that is being talked about in, the, in, in Congress as the Pelosi Act. Uh, is incredibly popular, as is term limits. And I'm the only Democrat to sign the pledge of term limits. 83% of Americans want term limits. We have it at every level of government here in California. Nancy Pelosi opposes that for obvious reasons. So this keeps, you know, keeps new blood coming in. I mean, I know there's some age talk going around here, but, you know, it helps to bring in new ideas. I'm also the new, only Democrat to re Wait a minute. the Green New Deal. Wait a minute. Fusion, Are you saying fusion. you're against old, white, bald men running the entire nation? Are you telling me that when I watched halftime no this word. year at the Super Bowl and didn't see a single white person but saw everybody else dancing and running around, that the old, white, bald men that run this country, somehow they weren't represented there? You, you don't like Mitch McConnell? I'm going to say that. <laughs> Oh my goodness! He doesn't like Mitch McConnell. Well, he's stepping down, so yeah, yeah, by yeah. his own. He finally, he finally he called it. Yeah, it's he called gravity. Like he's just leaning <laughs> forward, and he will pull down on his own. So, yeah. so Bianca, um, let's let's talk a little bit about the readiness of these Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Matt Gateses and the Donald Trumps. Uh, who really don't believe in anything except if there's money in your pocket, he wants it and he'll come up with a way to take it and and swindle. Like we've got a swindler in chief. We've got P.T. Barnum better than P.T. Barnum. I mean, this is just outrageous. So you're a transgender person. They help us understand how they're going to like be OK with that. Like, what's the plan here? Uh, the plan for the, uh, well, they, they seem to be okay with me. You know, I've asked, I've been asked out by a number of Republicans on the Hill. Um, I think that the, the issue they are, they're having is there, they, there seems to be a forwarding of the political lines that they're taking some issue with. Um, <clears throat> but I think by and large, they're mostly ambivalent towards us. Uh, but again, they are very happy to have you know, somebody like me running against Nancy Pelosi and the leading electoral minds have us going to the general election. So the first transgender woman could be taking Nancy Pelosi to the general election. And that's going to be a fun race. I still don't. I mean, these people are vociferous <laughs> about who uses what can. Yeah, I, and I can't see Jim Jordan going along with this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm not saying everybody's on board, but you know the thing is, is that it's we've been talking down to them for generations and for decades, and you know, looking down our noses at us, and that doesn't really seem to be working. There's over 80 million of them in the country, and of what? Who's the them? them uh, MAGA Republicans, you oh. know, you know, Walcos, whatever you want to call them. You know, people who are basically ignorant and don't understand a lot of what's happening in the world and look towards, you know, these unfortunate demagogues in the form of Marjorie Greene and uh, Matt Gates, 
and get a bad result. The only thing that really matters in this, in this political race is money. Money solves 99.9% .9 of socioeconomic problems. 60% of Americans are uh, living paycheck to paycheck. 40% can't afford a $500 financial setback. And the bottom 80% of America owns just 7% of its wealth. This has to change. Everything else is just noise. Renaming schools, um, whatever else, whatever the distraction they keep coming up with, don't let them do it. Bring it back to the money. That's the cost from the 2022 midterms. They were, they were in full control. The Democrats were in full control. It was their race to lose. And they tried to make it about something else because they didn't want to do right by, by their party and by the nation and give them economic relief, which polls overwhelmingly showed even what it left abortion as a distant third as what Americans wanted. And they wouldn't give it to them. There's this kind of contempt. We saw this with Biden, too, when this reporter asked him, look, there, you said it yourself. There's other Democrats who come in and do this job. Why don't you step aside and let them do it? There's this contempt. It must be me. I'm in control. I have to stay in control. It's not about helping people. And the people who aren't about helping people really need to go. We need to do it now. And even if you're somebody who has appreciation for Pelosi, you know, we need to help her do the right thing and retire. You know, the last thing we want is some sort of a Diane Feinstein or, or Mitch McConnell episode. Although she did look good on the journey in the end. Yeah, well, there's that. You know. So here's a here's a question, and th this is one that we talked about before. Um, the Democrats, we all go back to George W. Bush, George W. Bush, and swinging Dick Cheney, and all of these guys. And we remember. Go ahead, Rory. I know you you're just itching. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it in person. I, I, I just I just glad you you brought me up. Thank you. <laughs> so I have go back. back. <laughs> and we remember that when Nancy Pelosi became speaker, we thought the speaker wears Prada. Like, we're going to have this kick ass, and we didn't see it. And today, you know, the worst we get, this is the worst. Chuck Schumer will walk in after something so outrageous has happened. He'll pull his glasses down to the end of his nose like this and look up and say, I am terribly disappointed. Now, if he were a pearl clutcher, if he were wearing pearls, he could clutch his pearls. Let me give you the friggin' definition of discipline. We don't know what he does on his Tuesday nights. Okay, let's not. Yeah. Let me give you let me give you the definition of disappointment. Disappointing is when your summer cottage in Nantucket, where the maid has not changed the sheets in two weeks before your new guests get there. That's disappointing. I'm disappointed. That is disappointing. That is no disappointing. fresh sheets. Yeah. Now, the stuff that goes on is so outrageous. Now, we can hammer, and let's say John Duncan, in a perfect world, they'd remove Scientology's tax-exempt status and use the massive amount of money recouped from that to facilitate funding issues such as those you're raising tonight. Ah, huh, there it is. Imagine. Well, I think we get a lot more done with a wealth tax. We want to divest the billionaire class altogether. We'll still have rich people, okay? There'll still be millionaires just not billionaires okay that's too far there's an oxfam stack here that since 2020 the five richest people in the world doubled their worth while five billion people were sent into poverty and when, it, when you're dealing with an eight billion dollar eight billion person world that's pretty substantial so we well, have to go after them and we have to redistribute the wealth now it's not communism it's just a correction yeah, I think we can agree that there has to be some kind of adjustment. It used to be called regulation. And here's why you regulate it. Because somebody was naughty. In other words, you get 100 people in a village. One is the tailor. One is the hairdresser. One is the this, the that. That one cuts the coconuts. This one um, lances the uh, anal warts. This one, you know, everyone, it's a community. It's a village. Everyone has helped. Right, Rory? Rory loves the anal warts. Never lanced an anal ward. <laughs> a Ronald Reagan anal, anal ward, Lance, so that's obvious. We, we, <laughs> we let our anal wards trickle down. <laughs> so everyone is busy helping everyone else. Fact. Then there's always a Rumsfeld, a Wolfowitz, a Dick Cheney that comes in and goes, 
this is great. I read Lord of the Flies. These people are schmucks. I'm going to just take all the power and then I'm going to charge them double, triple retail or take away all the goods and services. That's why you have regulation because there's always a naughty person. It's not like you're bored on a Tuesday and you're going to come up with weird laws that don't need to happen. It's because you must regulate industries so people don't steal from other people. So now we're in this deregulated Wild West. We're all wondering, well, how do we end up with billionaires with dirt floors, marble floors, pharaohs, and the rest of us are pushing those goddamn 200 ton granite blocks up the side of a hill to build the burial ground for, you know, Melania's toenail fungus. It's outrageous. Regulate, yeah, baby. Yeah, and the, you know the way to imagine it is particularly apt. You know, yes, is that if we were having this conversation a few days ago, and I would ask, "What time is it?" You would say four thirty, and I would say, "What date?" And you would give me like, let's say the twenty eighth, and I would say, "Well, you're off about a day in in our in this in, in terms of our time in the solar system," and that's because we didn't have a leap day yet. We didn't have a correction mechanism. Nobody would argue that we can that we should have a Gregorian calendar system without a leap year. We need these periodic corrections to keep the system fair and balanced, pure and simple. Doesn't mean going all the way to the other end of the pendulum with communism or some other nonsense like that. It just means correcting the system and it means giving economic relief to the people who need it most. That's and why yet, UBI is so popular. And yet, as you say that, uh, the uh, Trumpkins and the MAGA folks and the the GOP, not the one I grew up with. I grew up with the Eisenhower flavored, then it became the Nixon flavored, and then Nixon gave us the EPA. Can you imagine? Which has been defunded. The fucking EPA. Like, no, we're not going to put a tailpipe in your classroom and rev up the engine in the back because, no, the EPA. No, it's not okay for you to drink piddle. Not okay. Yes, Richard Milhouse Nixon gave us not only the EPA, but OSHA. So when I'm in the factory working, making these beautiful Walmart quality um, coffee things, and I lose a couple of fingers, I actually could get Band-Aids because of Richard Milhouse Nixon. Creepy Richard Milhouse Nixon. That naughty, naughty man. I present the fact that you call me creepy. <laughs> and... That's what a Republican was. So today it's an it's a, a, a outer space kind of creature. And today they do want communism. They really do. Vladimir Putin to them with no shirt on, riding on horseback, clutching his foreskin while cattle prodding himself up a bum, shoving skippy peanut butter jars, riding around trying to canter now. So he goes up and down and up and down on the skippy jars. That's what they all want. Seriously. Now you're turning us all on, Carrie. You know what? For, for people watching the Carrie Harris Files, we have something for everyone. There's something for everyone. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. That was a big I have never seen my my father, who was a John Birch Republican, and that's a special breed. It's like makes MAGA look like I don't know, a chocolate bar. Maggots. Yeah, like maggots. <laughs> John Birch Republican, he was in the Air Force. He was at a SAC base in 1957, Strategic Air Command, which flew 24 hours a day, nuclear-laden B-52s circling the Earth. In fact, so important were these 24-hour circling B-52s laden with thermonuclear warheads, they never landed for years. They fueled the midair just in case. My father liked to drink. How much did he like to drink? increments of swimming pools. And so he was in the officer's club and got everyone squiffed all the time. This is before something called fail-safe. Fail-safe means when you decide to drop a nuclear bomb, Bill up in the cockpit has to open a ring binder. Then he has to take the key, the key from the navigator. And then on the ground over here, everyone needs matching keys. Put them in three, two, one, click, 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 click. Then you have codes. You have to spin a dial. I don't know what you have to do. Tickle somebody's nuts. You got to go through all of these just crazy hoops to be able to drop the bomb. But in the 1950s. Like you just let Slim Pickens ride her down. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's your favorite. In the 1950s, there is no fail safe yet. So my father gets on the horn and tells these guys it's time to take out the commies. Let's just do it. There you are. 
You, you're in Finland. You could be in over Moscow in a matter of hours. Just dump your payload. All you have to do is pu- pull that, push that, that uh, it's a th- sort of a, a joystick type thing. Push it forward and the bomb bay doors will simply <laughs> open up just like um, – <laughs> Dump your payload with the joystick. Really? Yeah, dump your payload. Just dump it, your payload. It's Lighten just getting place. everyone excited. Every- <laughs> is this is how you sell TV shows, people. Like, nobody cared when I was talking about UBI, but everybody loves somebody scrum getting whacked around. Like so UBI. Yeah, someone like, <laughs> smacking around the scrotus. <laughs> Let me just finish this important story here. <laughs> So here's what happens. He tells the guy to open the payload, drop the bombs, and the pilot balks. He balked. He was like, "Well, I, I really didn't think we were really ever going to like do that." And and how to? And the pilot waited and waited. And by then, I think my father got dragged off the mic back into the bar, and that was that. And they realized they needed better protocols. My point is, this is why you have regulations. This is why you have failsafe. This is why you have guardrails because there are lunatics out there that get a hold of the controls and they run the show so let's jump over to grooming because rory had a a situation with his own daughter different in some way but you were telling me something that schools were do you remember this rory nope no memory of it i'm I'm, I'm pulling a blank here uh let's define what let's define what this is first on the brain that's the problem rory yeah they're they're all about you know oh we can't have these grooming in schools and did you do you know what that is rory do you know what that is does that mean like brushing your hair like no no dental flossing during math kitties no no just Please tell me what it is. It's, you know, t- telling them they can be whatever they want to be, right? So, but grooming, um, but grooming in this context means that the schools are actually looking for the, they're looking to accomplish the objective of making children choose mm-hmm. transgender against their own natural, authentic wishes. Like there trying to put a up. preference for LGBTQ plus, right? Like Bianca yeah, is maybe the, the Jordan and the Marjorie Taylor Greens describe it. Yes, Matt. right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The technical term is called proselytizing, and um, so we want to make sure that there's a line between being supportive and proselytizing. Um, you know, I know that there are. You know, I get calls and emails every week from trans people around the country saying, you know, should I transition? You know, what's it like? All this kind of thing. And, um, you know, it, you know, it really depends. I mean, I would tell you in San Francisco, you know, if you're going to do it, you better have a lot of money and be prepared to go it by yourself, unfortunately, because the support just isn't there. Um, but we certainly want schools to be a supportive place for children to learn and grow and, um, and uh, you know, figure out who they are without any interference from anybody. Um, so I, I want to keep that safe and I want to keep that sacred. I think the Republicans has taken a few anecdotal evidence, a few anecdotal incidents out of context and exploited them for their usual fear tactics, which to, which we see with you know Marjorie Taylor Greene. And really, we really shouldn't respond to Marjorie Taylor Greene because again, you know, only a fool gets into a, takes on a fool's argument, and we're essentially trying to have an academic student's uh, argument with a spin teacher. So. Maybe to let, we'll just move on from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But yeah, we need to keep schools as a, as a safe place for sure. And, for and I think they are. I think maybe the first thing we should have in schools is something called education. And this yeah. is where a teacher would walk in and distribute knowledge. Yes, actually recycle the knowledge that they have. But instead, there are guns and God knows what goes on in there. This I hear from just regular people. There's virtually no education going on because the teacher is now forced to be a babysitter. All this as a result, by the way, of defunding education. Education being parent out, according to our founding fathers, according to Tommy Jefferson, even Ben Franklin, when he wasn't running his whorehouse in Philadelphia, referring to himself as the world's greatest whoremaster, which can be found in the Franklin Family Bible, by the way, which I've seen. He was quite something. But not to talk about Benjamin Franklin, which, of course, is my favorite topic. Let's just talk about what's supposed to go on in the schools. You're supposed to have education. 
But you go back to Rockefeller, and this is around 1901, and he wrote a white paper on you need to get rid of liberal arts. You have to stop teaching Greek. You have to stop teaching math and science because people will start to have analytical thought. They will be able to understand what they're being told and not believe everything. How do you punch in and out of a factory, punch on a clock, when you actually think there's something else you could be doing? You need to, like the British, know your station, where you were born, and know you can never, ever, ever break that glass ceiling. And starting that under King Ronald I, we started to remove uh, the wonderful things that were happening in Bianca's home state of California. There was free, very good education. You could go to UCLA or UCLA. UCLA here is uncultured lower Alabama, but where Bianca lives, it's actually a university with a mowed lawn and some nice bricks and ivy growing. And there you could get a first rate Berkeley. Jesus Christ, Berkeley. Wow. You could go to Berkeley and have the whole thing paid for. This is how Silicon Valley was born. Ding, ding, ding. Free education in this huge state. Geniuses get born, they get paid for, and then they contribute back to society. I'm not saying that um, the great Zuckerberg is contributing back to society, but he is contributing. Oh, to he will. We're going to get him. Yes. We're going to get him. Well, tell us about that. We're going to get him and his $100 billion. Not kidding. That's his net worth as of last August. $100 billion. That's a thousand million dollars a hundred times over. We're going to get that money. We're going to divest him and we're going to bring it back into society. That's the thing we have to be looking for in our candidates, not the noise they're making with transgender people or abortion or anything else. We have to go after the money because our society is on the verge of crumbling. We have to fix these problems. The Democrats haven't been doing. I think I said it last time. I got Steve Bannon to call for a wealth tax. The, the needle is starting to move and we have to push it forward or our society. That's, that is his nickname, the needle. Yeah. Let's but call him that. That's none of my business. I don't hang out in that bathhouse. So, Bianca, I understand you are from Österreich. Stimmt das? Jawohl. Sehr gut. Du warst dort geworden, ja? Yeah, let's let's keep it in English here for for Rory and everybody else. For for dumb dumb Rory, who is <laughs> and most of Los Angeles, it's still reeling from your screed or scrotum comment. Why do you treat me this way? <laughs> but I, I mean, there's just so much. There's so much here. It's so maddening. Um, when you want to do a wealth tax, and and I missed whatever comment came up a minute earlier, and I apologize to whoever wrote it. I, it just came up. Fa there it is. John says the entire world, apart from extreme right wing Christians and Putin and Xi Jinping is praying Trump doesn't get elected. Yeah, it's true. The U.S. is on the uh, precipice. Oh, precipice. precipice. Sorry. There yeah. we go again. I'm with the neighbor circumcising the cat. He said precipice this. of becoming a failed state. It's just so true. Yeah, it's so true. So how do you get into Congress and tell the people that own everything, that would be the billionaires that that fund the politicians through Citizens United, those bags of gold bullion, raw diamonds pouring out, just pouring into people's pocket, into Renee's pocket, and then she scoops them out and puts them in Senator Rory's pocket. How do you convince them that they get taxed? And what's the threshold where the wealth tax stops, like is it 800 million, 870 million, then you're no longer in that threshold. Like yeah. how do you get them on? We're working with our uh, economic advisor, former labor secretary, Robert Reich, and a professor at UC Berkeley on firming up those numbers. But right now we're thinking of nine digits of net worth or more. Um, why do they do that? Well, some of them are all coming around like Mark Benioff, the man behind uh, salesforce.com, who actually was in favor of a tax that we had on, the, I think it was the top 10% of biggest tech firms in the city at taxed, uh, I forget what it was, we called it Proposition C, it took place in 2018. And that was to bring money for homeless, for homeless uh, services in San Francisco. So some of them are coming around on this, but yeah, it is asking like, you know, somebody who's on addicted to heroin to cure themselves. 
you know, we need a kind of greater intervention at work here. So we need people focused on what's important, on getting these things passed, and even saving some people from themselves, really. So some of them are uh, getting on board. It's mostly people up here. But, you know, we, we see a lot of evil happening, especially with the Ninth Circuit ruling recently on homeless streets uh, sweeps here in San Francisco. <clears throat> They're now trying to challenge that in the Supreme Court, and they got their wish, and they got it fast-tracked. So I actually was one of the people who fought to protect that because we were trying to force San Francisco to actually solve the problem and house people. They literally want to sweep them into the gutter right here in San Francisco, the progressive city. And I hear um, uh, rumors of the same thing happening in Los Angeles. So we were trying to force the city to solve the problem, actually house people. And we have the money and resources mm -hmm. to do it. There are 60,000 vacant units in the city of San Francisco. We don't need to build out more. We just need to get put the money and the housing together and house these people like we should do for our society. <clears throat> now, that's going to upset Wall Street because uh, Wall Street has hedge fund managers who buy up entire blocks, acres of buildings, luxury apartments. They are also co-developers to take people out of singly, single family houses, especially when they're beautiful 1920s craftsmen, tear them down, put up a 60 unit thing, and then leave the apartments empty. When you have all those empty apartments, you get to raise the rate of rent because there's still only that many apartments left. But now you have so many more, but they're not on the market and you keep driving it up and up. Forcing habitation, like this, making a, a rule, regulation once again, that you're allowed to sit on an empty apartment for over a year, but if you can't do something with it, you got to do something with it. Yeah, that's called a vacancy tax. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, yeah, of course, they're not going to like it, but here's the better question. Would they like a civil war even more? That would be extremely inconvenient and painful. Millions will probably die unnecessarily. We lost over 600,000 lives in the first civil war. Maybe let's head that up. Money has been the, every empire since the beginning of time has failed and it's for the same reason, greed and selfishness. We need to turn that around. We need, we need to change what's in our heart. And we need to like work with other people who we may, may not necessarily like to get that done. You know, like I said before, and I'll say it again, the Republicans love universal basic income because it allows us to reimagine minimum wage and make small businesses more, cre uh, more competitive. Right? Small businesses are the heart and soul of San Francisco neighborhoods. I'm sure other cities will agree with that, too. So we need to support them, and that's the way to do that. And that's how, why we're working with them. Mm. Well, now that, that, when you've action. got universal basic income, that means everybody can go buy something. You no longer have the complete have-nots, which is a giant chunk of America. As you pointed out, yeah. people are 500 bucks away from living on the same sidewalk uh, that they are forbidden to live on, by the way. In L.A., they refer to these now as tiny encampment villages or TIVs. And if you live in a TIV, um, well, you can't have that. It's it's camping. So they ship you to a campsite, which is generally about 20 miles outside of town called Lancaster, which is where the prison is, I'm and dump you there. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's like what our governor, Ron DeSantis, does in Florida. You take the taxpayers' money here, you get a bunch of private jets, and you just fly them to another state, dump them off, and leave and come back. There, problem solved. Just relocate no, the issue. Solved. Problem's not solved. It's just relocated. Just like you said, we need to start solving our problems and eating our political vegetables. This is also the problem. This is also a significant problem in the root causes of crime. Okay. People keep saying there's no consequences up here. There are consequences. The thing is, they don't mean much to the people committing them because when you look around and every day and your life is one degree of separation for, for, from prison, you've got nowhere to go but up. All right, we need to put more carrot back into the system and, and you know work it that way instead of trying to create a police state, which will also fail for a, different host, a host of different reasons. So we actually have to solve these problems. And that's what DAs like Chesa Boudin and Pamela Price and George Glascone down there, who is, you know, a transplant from up here. That's what we've all been trying to do. We're trying to say it's not on us to solve these problems. It's on the politicians to solve these problems. 
They're the ones who need to do that. And we're not going to step on people's rights to do that. We're not going to let you scapegoat these people anymore. We call that the weaponization. We call that the criminalization of, of, of poverty and the weaponization of crime. That's when it, force, it forces people against each other. It's like, you know, these neighborhoods going, I'm sick of the crime. We got to get more cops in there. And that doesn't solve the problem. What solves the problem are social services like housing. That's what solves the problem. And so are you, are you saying that places like Norway and Switzerland and Germany, former Nazis, by the way, who have social services and retirement, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, you get to retire and they'll pay for it. And you get medical care all the way to the finish line. And let's say you can't pay your rent. They pay it for you. That's what you paid those taxes for all those years. Are you saying that social that people could live like Europeans and eat like organic food and have fresh water to drink and not shoot each other um, because they're so frustrated? And let's talk about the Absolutely. American public being responsible and accountable. This is not it is abject government failure. But let's face it. We live in a fucked up culture. And when I say that, yeah. I mean it as a gerund. That way we know it's grammatically okay. It, I wasn't being offensive in any way. I was just using it in a way to um, emphasize my point here. This culture, LA, where I also live, where you drive to Rock and Roll Ralphs on Sunset Boulevard, you drive by these tiny encampment villages, homeless people, barfing, vomiting, rats, cholera, disease, people mm -hmm. tinkling in their own tents, uh, uh, leaving scumber in great piles, causing other animals and vermin to come in while you go shopping in the grocery store called Ralph's, which is Safeway in other parts or Kroger, whatever it is. And the grocery store manager doesn't seem to have a problem with people living in excreta in his parking lot. In fact, the entire city of LA, 14 million people, doesn't seem to have a problem, except that homeless people are irritating. But it doesn't occur to them that they're all driving around in Range Rovers because somebody could see them, nobody they'll ever meet, nobody they'll ever know, but somebody could see them in their delicate egos. Oh my God, my ego. I have to have a Range Rover. I have to have one so that I can go three miles an hour because the traffic is so bad, 20 lanes, three miles an hour in my Porsche, just in case. And I, I drive over the feet of homeless people. That's so fucked up. Those are assholes. You don't let people rot on your sidewalks. I don't care who you are, where you live, how much money or how little money you have. If you're a small business, it's very simple. Do you want someone vomiting on the front steps of your small business? No. Why? Because when a, a the potential customer comes to buy something and they see that they will never come back ever, ever, ever come back. So it's kind of common sense. What happened to the common sense in America? Right. And that's exactly what I was just talking about up in San Francisco. That's how they try to drive a wedge between citizens. All right. We, instead of doing the right thing, they simply try it. They simply put the problem back on the people and a lot of businesses left. Uh, Macy's is leaving uh, Union Square up here. I, I don't know if that made news down there. A number of department stores left because they refuse to solve the problem. There's this kind of just abject contempt that the Uniparty or Deep State, or whatever you want to call it, has that it's in, that it's in control and they, they've penetrated the Democratic and Republican parties up here in uh, Northern California too. That it says, I refuse to solve the problem. I'm going to keep forcing the problem until it gets worse and worse and I'll deal with the consequences later on if there are any. And the delusion that there are, aren't going to be any content, aren't, aren't any con, are not going to be any consequences are absolutely preposterous. There will be consequences and they will be dire and terrible. And that's where we're heading to. So we need to not focus on fighting each other, putting neighbor against neighbor. We have to change the government. We have to fundamentally change it. Policing is not the solution. You're not going to arrest your way out of this. Right. These are serious problems that we have to solve, and they've been neglected for decades. And it's going to mean radical solutions to change these problems. We can't do incremental solutions to a problem that took decades to form and have it have any kind of serious uh, impact in real time. So that's why we have to make these changes. As, as we come to the end here, let's talk a little bit about 
the specter of Donald Trump once again being president. Now, he's a likable guy if, you know, I mean, I I think he's awesome. And when I say awesome, I mean, I am awe-stricken by him. Um, he is my wet dream of a P.T. Barnum, of a Mr. Ringling's Big Top. He knows how to pick up a chair and get those lions to roar. He is a guy who can run at any woman anywhere in the world with his two fingers outstretched and run at full speed and grab them, grab them, not say hello, not touch them on the shoulder, but just grab them by their genitalia, which I imagine is bad when you're in high heels. You could lose your balance, but you could sue him for falling on your rear end. I mean, it, 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 there's, it's so ripe for satire that it's ridiculous. If your dog catcher, which you don't have in San Francisco, you said anymore, I don't know where they have them, but I imagine they still do. If your dog catcher were a sexual creep and were running for dog catcher, nobody would vote for him. Nobody would vote for a sexual predator dog catcher. Nobody would vote for the garbage man for the same rules. But the president of the United States, e pluribus unum, somebody to replace uh, any of, of it, it's just, it's so outrageous. Like, but when you're president, then you're Jeffrey Epstein level. Like what president doesn't crave a 14 year old cooch? Well, I don't, but like, am I uh, in the wrong club uh, that I don't, not the president. That. Hey, let's make that very clear. Uh, you know, when I you hope not. of you, you know. I mean, I'm serious here. But, but, but the thing you have to understand about Trump is that they're seeing it as a as a protest vote, okay, to the establishment and uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans. That's what it's all about, right? So <clears throat> Whether or not he's a creep is immaterial in their minds, I and mean, he is pretty creepy, right? But they're they're doing this as a protest to the establishment. They are pissed off against against the establishment. They're pissed off against the deep part, deep state, the Green Party state. We saw this, you know, the, the first time state? around. The Green Party, Party state? <laughs> no, the Uniparty state. Oh, um, Uniparty. <clears throat> you know, we saw this back in 2016, right? People who couldn't vote for Bernie Sanders didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. A lot of them went and voted for Donald Trump. Americans are pissed off. We also have to remember that people like Donald Trump are a byproduct of America, right? So that's, again, why we have to kind of change our value system, too. You know, and if you were to take like an Airbnb tour through his mind, I'm sure you'd sit there. You'd see like a weird little kid going, what did I do wrong? I did everything that, you know, I was you know, raised to do, you know. Get the big house, get the beautiful child bride and the money and all that other nonsense, right? <clears throat> we well, have to change what we value. Let's, what we let's ask the question. Let's ask the dreaded question. Is Donald Trump the finest American who has ever lived? Is he the best we have to offer in the United States? Is he the apex of all things intellectual, all things cultural, a man about town? Is he a man with swagger, a, a jo Joie de vivre? Is he debonair? Is he like the greatest of the, would the founding fathers all sit around and go, God damn it, we missed the point. There it is. That, that is the man we want wielding 10,500 multi-tip thermonuclear war warheads. That's the man we want to run and make decisions on behalf of vulnerable people. This is the greatest thing, the greatest thinker, the greatest mind. And so what if his grandfather ran a whorehouse. So what? This is where he learned about women and how to treat them. Like, is this the greatest guy who ever lived? Because he says he is. And why would he lie? The Supreme Court, Scrotus, has just declared that he is immune. Right. Uh, you know, again, um, <laughs> that's a lot to think about. But I try not to think about Donald Trump too much. I got my own problems up here. Um, but you know, the Democrats essentially brought this on themselves too. You know, they had every chance to do, to do, to make the decisions that they needed to make to keep this man from being in office and they don't want to do it. We saw this back in 2016 and 2020, every poll, every one said the only person who could beat Donald Trump was Bernie Sanders. But of course the establishment didn't want, want him getting in there and actually making changes that would cost those people money. So they railroaded him out. 
So now, you know, that we've got to reckon with the type of likes of Donald Trump. And people like Donald Trump can only get to the places they are because they're the ones with the money. Because the rest of America is just fighting for their lives every day and do not and just stay off the street. So we have well, to change this. This is a call to action for all of us, whatever anyone believes. I'm an independent um, because I am. I just want the best person. I no longer believe in a Democrat or a Republican. As Noam Chomsky said, they're Demikins and Republicrats. So, and as yeah. you said, Bianca, it's a uniparty. It's silly. It's nonsense. The Democrats tend to be Republicans. They're just delay it by six months. That's all it yes, is. Just absolutely. delay it by six months. And and they all feed off the same trough, a parliament of whores, as P.J. O'Rourke uh, famously wrote in the late 1980s. Of course, he's been banned because he was funny. And we can't have funny anymore either. No humor. Right, Rory? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little used to date. Well, we I was expecting more fans. Universal health care. We can. Right. Well, this has been great. Um, I feel enlightened. I feel I feel I feel wonderful. Um, and I thank you for the award. And it's just, I mean, what are we gonna do? Except we gotta we gotta fight. We have to remember that the country looks the way it does because we let it. Uh oh accountability we let it happen we sat and did nothing uh, i supported bernie i was out there even with dick van dyke we were all out there in la um i had friends of mine driving him around uh but i did not vote for donald trump that's for goddamn sure i did not absolutely not no way so i am not that stupid i might be upset with the system but i am not going to commit suicide to make the system better and then not be around to enjoy it because it's bad, making it double bad doesn't somehow make it good, like two bads make an excellent. No, it doesn't work mathematically and it doesn't work politically. John says exactly the same blur in Australia between the left and right side of politics are essentially the same party treading water while the population drowns. God, these are pithy sentences. And, and the Why politicians can't we say it just like get that? older. Here's, here's the deal, all right? The politicians, they just, they just get older. <laughs> and that's that's how it is. Is that George Bush? That's not like George is, Bush. George is old. Uh, old is normal. <laughs> <laughs> old is important to becoming normal. <laughs> Grandpa, well, that's normal. called the democracy, um, and that's that's thanks to Proposition Thirteen. Um, but the good news is, the good news is, we can do something within twenty four hours. Because as many, hopefully, as many of your viewers know. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday, the March 5th primary. And in California and San Francisco, voting has already started. So you can mail in your ballot. Even if you voted for somebody, you can go in and change your vote. You can change your ballot. So please remember to vote. If, uh, you know, Help us. We hire 500 at-risk and BIPOC youth from West Oakland and the Hunters View Bay Point areas of San Francisco. Every, if you can donate, please donate the maximum, $3,300. Every $2,100 we get allows us to train 25 kids for a whole weekend. So we are making changes up here. Call your friends in San Francisco. Get up on social media. Tell them for, to vote for Bianca Von Creek. Tell them to vote for change, to change the system, to take the head of this god-awful monster off. We have to help these people. We have to do change. Now is the time. This person's never going to leave office. They're going to go there until they die. So we have to make the change now. We go to our and, social media. Um, and we need people to read. If you haven't ever read 1984 before, you must yeah. read it. It is required reading now. You must read Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. It is required reading. And then read some P.G. Woodhouse for a laugh. But seriously, you've you got to start to read the stuff. With Richard Bertrand. Yeah. Yes. The, these are the manuals, the instruction manuals of how and where it goes if you do nothing. These were written like 1984 was written in 1948, and it was supposed to happen by 1984. And here it is, 19 or 2024, and we're sitting in it in a surveillance uh, system where we're monitored voluntarily. Come on, let's be honest. Voluntarily, Alexa, what time is it? And even more recently, we have the Hunger Games, right? Um, that that should resonate with a lot of your viewers too. 
You yeah. have to make those changes. We're going to be we're going to be talking to the people of San Francisco and Cisco tonight on a social media. Uh, I think it's Generation Revolt at uh, Substack.com. Generation Revolt at Substack.com. You can find us on our social media. Just search Bianca Von Krieg. You'll find our social media links. We have a link tree. You can find it through our website. Get on it. Encourage your friends and family up here to vote. Do what you can. Call the local media up here. We're already getting some traction from the networks. We're, we are going to make this change, and it's extremely possible that we'll be making it to the general election because of our support from the Republicans, the progressives in the city, and the LGBT community. That should be enough to put us over the top. We really want to go over the top. We want to get this thing ready for the general election to take this person down, to take down this uniparty state, and that's who this person is. And anybody who believes differently, all you have to do is just look at her record. What has she done in 40 years? And nobody can say anything. You know, if she tries to take credit for Obamacare, you know, she had two super majorities before that to do something about it. And she did nothing. She, well, that was you know, Rahm Emanuel, though. He's the one that drove the stake in that uh, and then became yeah. mayor of Chicago and drove that into the toilet. So there's just stinky politicians. Doesn't matter what party anymore. You and I, party we anything. have to wake up. We have to wake up. We have to act like Gandhi. We have to stop pulling salt out of the caverns. And we have to decide to make the world that we want to live in. And if that means doing it in your own neighborhood and letting it metastasize into the rest of the world, by God, do it. But remember, your elected representatives work for you. They are your cleaning lady, not the other way around. They are working there for you. So you have to force them. You like Europeans. Do you think European leaders can get away with this shit? No way. People no. take the streets. But we're busy, you know, not all of us, but a whole lot of us. And I watch Netflix, too. I admit it. But I wait until later at night. If it's daytime, I will fucking go out in the streets with you. I will march, as I did in L.A. We put on a parade for world peace. We brought in the surviving grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, Arun Gandhi. This was back during the Bush-Cheney years. And we got 10,000 listeners. Imagine back when radio was listenable. And we got them to march down Hollywood Boulevard we took over the streets. We ended up at CNN. Why would we end up at CNN? Because CNN would not come down the elevator and outside and check out 10,000 people front loaded with movie stars without having the movie stars at the front. We even threw a bucket of water on the titties of Daryl Hannah. So the thing oh, would come yeah. down the elevator. That's what it took to get CNN, the most trusted name in news, to get in the goddamn elevator and come down to the street. But that's good old right. fashioned. God damn it. The voice of the people. So get off your ass. God, I feel like, uh, what was, it? what was the network? Like, like Ned Beatty, not in the pig scene from deliverance. Is not, I can't take it. <laughs> I'm not, is not, I can't take it anymore. Peter Finch. <laughs> Peter Finch. Now I want to look at box number four, which is Renee. I want to see Renee. Renee is a goddess extraordinaire. Renee is the producatrix. She is the technical director of this show. There's a she, way. she is amazing and profound. And I have failed to acknowledge her to the degree that she has earned. This silent worker bee buzzing, buzzing in the hive, going in each of the little combs in the honeycomb, which covered in sticky, sappy molasses like honey her wings are stuck to her body and she's wiggling it's terrible it's so from I all the circumcisions that's the stickiness <laughs> exactly <I> come from. <laughs> let's, let's blame her for that shall we <laughs> let's thank bianca von krieg wish you all the best anybody out there fighting on behalf of the humans gets around gets golf claps because we need it today and thank you guys for giving this is so much fun and it is and I, and I want to say something carrie because i've been going out also to to protest and to march and not that many people go out there especially in in new york in, in the winter a lot of people say well they can do this on social media 
But I will tell you, when you get out there and, and you're holding a sign and you get to talk to other people in real life, in real life, and you can wear your mask if you want to, it's okay. But you're outside, it's okay. But, you know, people are honking and people will roll down their windows and argue with you or say, yeah, it's an experience that is unlike being on social media. So I want to say what Carrie's saying. Please, people, get out from behind the computer. The computers are great. It's a, it's a both and. Do both. Get, but to be mobilized and to be visible, that's the stuff that gets more attention, I think, because everybody's a keyboard warrior these days. Right. And the fact is you get to you get what you give. And if you give nothing, then you cannot complain that you're a victim of it. Just like the Germans in World War II, they're now reframing a lot of World War II history as though they were occupied by the Nazis. This is a kind of special genius. Well, yes, they uh, came uh, in and yeah. they took over and they did this and that. And the greatest here, PR trick of all time. The greatest yeah. PR trick of all time. Yeah, it's just great. But that's what's happening here now. It's, yeah. the same, it's just inverted. So stay awake, ask questions, talk to each other. And remember, we are all Americans and we are all equals. Maybe it doesn't play out that way, but we really are all equals. Let's all be Americans together. Let's flush the toilet of nonsense and have a beautiful Japanese toilet once again. Agreed. Do you think, Rory, that's 